A project by Plant and Food Research has found the selection of plants for shelter belts and hedgerows can provide not only shelter and shade, but also benefits such as habitat and food, both for pollinating insects and for predators of insect pests. The project is in its third year. It's funded by the Sustainable Farming Fund, the Foundation for Arable Research, and farmers who are providing resources to establish the plantings. I've been working at Plant and Food for the last 10 years, focusing more on the alternative pollinators to honeybees, so those other wild pollinating species. The background started with our initial work on traditional hedgerows, where we found unexpected um, influences on different insect species. These could be beneficial insects um, and a positive influence, or they could be a negative influence by pest species, increasing abundances of those. So we wondered, well, if these hedgerows influence different insect species, can we actually create hedgerows that increase the abundances of beneficial insects, but do not harbour pest species? The next step was to have a look at what plants are available and what their interactions are with particular beneficial insects and with pest species. So we've selected, such as in this planting, a range of native species that have positive influences on beneficial insects, but it's a mix of species because we want them to be all flowering across different times so that they can support the life cycles of those target insects that we're trying to get to benefit farms. Up until this stage, uh, the, the hedgerows are pretty much introduced species, uh, mainly macrocarpa and pine hedgerows. We've actually seen a number of these being knocked out for irrigation purposes. So what we want to do is get hedgerows that are more flexible for the farmers and provide maximum benefits possible. Our results after this one year have shown marked increases in the beneficial insects that we're targeting, um, particularly pollinators such as hoverflies and native bees are markedly increased over this past year. We know that we've got increasing beneficial insects, but we need to test them on the surrounding crops. Are they actually in higher abundances on those crops? Are they producing increased crop production? A second point is that this forms a foundation for establishing other projects. So we know that native bees are fantastic crop pollinators, but in a farm situation, it's difficult for them to be able to survive because of constant land disturbance and also lack of floral resources that are predictable across the time. So we're looking to create an extended list of plant species uh, that can be adapted to um, a particular environment for a farmer. So it may be a climatic variable, those species that fit into those climatic variables. Um, or also into the types of land use practices the farmers require. So we need to, we're looking to offer as maximum flexibility as possible. This is a window trap, which attracts insects from just the near vicinity. As the insects fly in, they get confused and it helps trap the insects into the water solution. Another aspect of the trap is that it collects a wide variety, so it's attractive to a whole range of insects. So it's really good for trapping both beneficial insects in terms of natural enemies and also pollinating species, our two groups of target insects. In terms of our crops, flies and bees are the most abundant and particularly efficient pollinators. So these are the ones that we've been targeting with bees, for example, farmers would already be aware that, you know, to avoid spraying during flowering, and if it's required then to spray in the evening when the bees aren't active, that pretty much follows on with our native bees as well, because that's when they go to their own nest sites. Um, with flies, uh, during this period, uh, they'll use the resources out of these um, fields so they'll tend to move back into them um, at times when the crop's not flowering and that's the time that's often recommended to spray crops. And the reason we've chosen native plants is because we 
believed that they would have fewer pest species associated with them. And that's actually, from the literature, from what we know, that has proven to be the case. One area that we looked at was in, in these non-productive areas of farm margins and whatnot, for the farmer to put in plants that would create the habitat for your beneficial insects, but not provide a habitat for your pest species. The native plant species that we were particularly interested in, for some there's a lot of information available as to what number of pollinators and pollinating species visit them. And unfortunately, the information about your generalist predators is not as great. So we have to work on the idea that if you bring in insect prey that won't be a pest species on your crops, but will provide food for your uh, generalist predators, then you're likely to increase the numbers of those species as well. So trying to understand how by increasing the number of beneficials in this planting and its benefit in the crop has, has yet to actually be determined. Intuitively, you think that if you can increase the numbers on a farm, then there'll be more available at the times that they're needed. But we still need to know how well they're moving out of these areas. It's known that with, with pollinators and with natural enemies, we rely on both of those quite a bit for our um, crop production. One is for the uh, improving yields, that's with pollinators. And Brad's work has shown that, um, and, and work elsewhere has shown that your non-honeybee pollinators, so your alternative pollinators, are capable of pol increasing your crop yields markedly above just honeybee alone. This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.